So for this problem, just draw the preferred product and uh, try it first and then I'll explain it. Okay, so the one thing to realize in this problem is that AgNO3 actually forces a carbocation, right? So AgNO3 forces a carbocation. So what does that do? So since the bromine leaves and forces a carbocation to form, um, now we have to remember that it, the carbocation will go to the most stable spot. So in this case, there's a secondary right here, right? And there's a secondary right here and a tertiary. So carbocations favor more substituted spots, so it will go to the ter tertiary. So there will be a hydride shift, and the um, carbocation will go over there. And then what will happen is um, the second part, right? CH3OH. Um, CH3OH will, will come by and attack this carbocation. So that's why we have OCH3 right here. And that will actually be a plus charge, right? So then what can happen is the, a water, right? A water will come by and uh, steal this hydrogen away. And so when it steals the hydrogen, the hydrogen's uh, electrons will go to the oxygen. And then therefore it will now be, it will now have no charge. Now the other thing to realize is that it can be a SN1 or an E1 reaction. Um, and that's why I listed both, right? Because, so the one I showed was that it was an SN1, right? So SN1 meaning um, it forms this compound where the OCH3 acted like a nucleophile and attacked right here. Now the OCH3 can also act as an E1, right? And what that will do is the you have the positive charge right here, right? Positive charge right here. The OCH3 can steal a hydrogen, form a negative charge, and then therefore form a double bond. And then that will be your E1 product. And usually when you have SN1 and E1, it will be a pretty close call. And um, varying from professor, um, professors will vary on what answer it should be. But usually uh, in, the, in re real life, it will be a mixture of SN1 and E1. So I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.